Hi everyone, I wanted to talk a little bit about the new movie called Being the Ricardos. It's a movie that's directed by Aaron Sorkin, and uh, Aaron Sorkin attempts to tell a very serious story about the popular TV show I Love Lucy that was big in the 1950s, particularly a story behind the scenes during a really, really tough week when uh, so much pressure and tension and so many things were hitting uh, the actors and the crew uh, for that show. Now, from the beginning, I'll tell you that from what I understand, all of the ideas, all of the events pretty much were true that are portrayed in this film. The difference is that all of these events did not occur all within the same week. Um, the story makes it sound like it's all the same week, I guess, just to have a uh, dramatic license and to make it, you know, interesting as a film. So let's get that out of the way right away. Um, I was disappointed in this film somewhat, and it doesn't mean that I think it's terrible because it's not terrible. Um, basically, we're, we're dealing with dark sides, gloomy and bleak stuff here. And I knew that going in. I realized this was not going to be uh, Lucy Ricardo, <laughs> a.k.a. Lucille Ball, uh, doing jokes, being funny through the whole thing. I realized this was a very serious, uh, intense side of the situation. So I didn't expect a reboot. I didn't expect this was going to be all laughs. It was going to be like watching the Idol of Lucy comedy uh, series. I realized that. But... In the end, I think it hurt this movie that there was very precious little of the lighter side thrown in, too, for good measure. I think you could have had both. I think you could have shown a very serious side to the story of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz without forsaking what made them so great. And I think that's the biggest omission here that's detrimental to the overall success of the movie. So let's start with the actors. We have Nicole Kidman, who at first glance you wouldn't think would be good at all as Lucille Ball. You know, I think it's very, very difficult to portray an icon like Lucy. How can you do that, you know? But I think that Nicole Kidman came just about as good as you could possibly do. And I don't think it could have been any better, you know, for any other actress. I thought that Nicole Kidman mostly sounded a lot like Lucille Ball. Uh, her, the things she did with her voice... And she pretty much uh, encapsulated the movements that Lucy would do. So I thought I, she was believable as Lucy for the most part. And of course, there was some, I believe, some prosthetic work done. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think I'm accurate on that facially. But uh, yeah, I, I, I completely was invested in her as uh, Lucille Ball. And then we have uh, Javier Bardem who is uh, Desi Arnaz. Uh, he's a little old for the part. I think he's in his 50s, Javier is. And uh, Desi was in his, his uh, 30s, I believe, at the time. But still, he pulled it off as well. I thought all things considered, but Bardem did a pretty good job as uh, Arnaz, um, despite the age factor. Um, I believed when I was watching this movie that I was watching Desi and Lucy. I, I, they, they sold me on it, and that's important. Now... The only thing is, as again, I would say, I, I really think that in order to really encapsulate the, the true feeling of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, you had to have a little bit of comedy in there. You had to. Um, occasionally, there were moments where they show you very, very brief, brief, brief snippets of a couple of the routines that were done on the I Love Lucy uh, show, but not enough, not enough at all. Um, there's a, a moment there. You can see like uh, the real Desi and Lucy having a good time. And the movie is very much concentrated, as I say, on the problems. Things come up like uh, Lucy gets pregnant. And back in those days, in the 50s, you couldn't really talk about pregnancy on television. You couldn't even show people married sleeping in one bed. They had to have twin beds. And uh, they wouldn't dare mention the word pregnant. They had to say she was expecting. And there's a, an interesting bit in the movie where, of course, Desi Arnaz is trying very hard to convince the, the, the suits there that uh, they're going to go ahead and they're going to show you Lucy, the character, having a baby. That's never been done on television. You know, you know characters don't have babies, and don't get pregnant. So this was kind of like... Uh, breaking some ground, which, of course, uh, the real Desi Arnaz always did. Desi Arnaz was the one who 
invented multiple camera uh, angles for recording and filming. So he was a little bit of a genius in his own right. And uh, so they have to deal with that, the pregnancy issue here in the movie. And then at the same time, Lucy is being held up as some kind of a communist. And uh, that threatens the show back then. You know, so we have to deal with a newspaper article coming out saying that Lucy's red and all that kind of stuff. Uh, then you have an issue of Desi Arnaz, who we know was very unfaithful to Lucy in real life and was cheating on her. And even though he did love her very much, which you can see in the movie too, he uh, couldn't help himself and he would be very much going astray and cheating. So we have all this working together at the same time. And uh, I also like the actors in here playing Vivian Vance and William Frawley. Playing Vivian Vance is Nina Arianda. I think she's really good and convincing as Vivian Vance, who would be Ethel Mertz, uh, the neighbor on the TV show. And then we have J.K. Simmons uh, playing William Frawley. And he, in a lot of ways, is, is, is kind of uh, a highlight of the movie. He has a lot of good lines and a lot of good scenes. J.K. Simmons was believable as William Frawley, who would be Fred Mertz. So I like that the movie shows you that uh, what, what those of us were diehard fans, of which I am, I'm a diehard fan of I Love Lucy. I saw every episode multiple times over my life when I was a, a little boy, was on television constantly. I got to know every episode like the back of my hand. So I'm a big diehard fan. And uh, I, I already knew that in real life, Vivian Vance and William Frawley, Fred and Ethel, didn't really get along. They hated each other. And that comes through, you know, because Vivian Vance was like 22 years younger than William Frawley. And she resented having to have an old man, as she called him, an old man as her husband in the TV show. And also the movie shows how a kind of angle I like too, how Vivian Vance was really mistreated because they wanted her to be uh, heavier than Lucy. They wanted her to always have some kind of a weight problem, you know. Uh, Ethel Mertz's weight was always a staple of laughs on the show. So there's scenes in there where they're trying to keep her fattened up, and they don't really like the idea too much that she's losing weight, really. And uh, all this kind of behind-the-scenes stuff, I understand completely, I have to emphasize this, that this is what director Aaron Sorkin was seeking to achieve. He wanted to show uh, the bleak side, the dark side here, wanted to show serious stuff. He was not trying to make a comedy here. I understand that. Uh, and But I think that, that works to the film's uh, detriment, as I say. I think it, it, it's a very gloomy, uh, yellow, brownish, dark tint to the movie. It, the, the look of it is very... In fact, as I'm looking here at my TV reflection of the lamp, this kind of brown or sepia kind of look. I understand they're trying to represent this was a long time ago. This was the, the early 1950s. But for God's sake, I mean, you know, it didn't have to look that depressing. The movie's very depressing. Um, and uh, that's the biggest problem that I have with it, basically. Uh, I, I don't have a problem with them making a story about the negative side of what happened in their lives. I get all that as I keep it stressing. The thing for me, though, is I really think they would have had an even better film if they showed you some of the funny things that uh, Lucille Ball was capable of doing. That's what's missing from this movie. There is no indication whatsoever that we're dealing with the greatest comedian that ever lived. Lucy is, without a doubt, in my mind, the funniest woman who ever lived, and she was truly, uh, <laughs> as we can see here, you know, truly a, a star in her own right. They managed to show you exactly why she was kind of the brains behind a lot of these scenes. She was very much a workaholic, and she very much was something of a control freak, too. And that's that's okay to show that. That's the reality of it, and that's fine. But, you know, these people were more than that. Uh, if I didn't know any better, if I was a newbie, and if I was just coming into this movie and I'd never heard of a Lucy or Desi... I would say, well, what, what's so great about this show, I Love Lucy? What was so funny about it? What was so, why was she held in such high regard? I mean, none of that is in there. I mean, he, you know, and the same thing for Desi Arnaz as well. All he really does is come in and say, Lucy, I'm home, and that's about it. They, show, they don't show him doing anything funny. They could have had some extended scenes of some of the best comedy bits on there. I think Nicole Kidman and uh, Javier Bardem could have pulled it off. I really think so. Uh, 
it seems like when Lucy's doing something outrageous and, you know, Ricky would come into the house and he'd be like, oh, just something like funny. You know, here's a, a moment in the TV series where Lucy, Ricky thinks he's going bald. So Lucy has hair treatments and she starts putting these weird concoctions on his head to try to, to convince him that he's not going bald to make the treatment so unbearable that, that uh, Ricky can't take it and gives up on his <laughs> fear notion that he's going bald. So, I mean, they could have done so much more. They could have made it a little funny and then still have those serious core moments, what the film is based on, but show us the contrast. Show us the multiple sides to these characters, you know? Um, it doesn't have to be all about communism and headlines and scandal and cheating and people, you know, hating each other, like uh, Vivian Vance and Bill Frawley. It doesn't just have to be that. You could have had them doing some, some great comic moments and saying, ah, I see why this show is such a hit, and I see why this woman was the funniest lady who ever, who ever hit the screen. I can, I can get that. I see why Desi Arnaz was also uh, funny in his own right. Uh, I, I see that, but also we cut away to seeing them on the outside, how they're having problems. So anyway, that's what it was for me. I, I didn't think they, they achieved that. And if that wasn't the goal, it should have been, because I think it kind of ruins the movie. Now, on a scale of four stars, as I rank my movies, I would put Being the Ricardos at two and a half stars, uh, which is, for me, that's an above average rating. You know, I think it's worth seeing at least once. Uh, I may have different feelings on this when I see it again. I think I may add this to my collection. And when I do, I'll give it another shot. And maybe uh, it'll appeal to me more. I mean, I'm interested in these actors and the characters. So maybe uh, I'll give it a second, third watch and see how I feel about it. Anyway, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. See you soon.